sheriff is now mad. He's taken away all your burdens. Hello, God bless you. Uh, I'm Bishop Raymond Watts, and I'm so glad that you're with us on today. Looking forward to getting into God's Word and talking about the great God in which we, uh, we serve. Our program is God is Great, and uh, when we think of His goodness and all that He's done for us, our souls just simply have to cry hallelujah. It's just wonderful to be saved. I'm so glad you're with me on today. We're going to be studying God's Word. We're going to be praying for the sick. We're going to ask God to work miracles in your life. It's going to be a tremendous time in the Lord on today. Let's just pause for a word of prayer. Father, I do thank you and praise you for the privilege of being able to share God's word with the people of the Lord. I'm praying, God, now that you would move by your spirit, wherever uh, our listener may be, in the, in, the, in the bedroom, in the kitchen, in the automobile, wherever they might be, on their cell phone, wherever they may be, I'm praying, God, that you would touch them and bless them and that you would move in their lives and let this be a day of turnaround and victory in Jesus' great name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Listen, let's get started on the day. First of all, we're going to go to our singers, and they're going to usher in the spirit of the Lord in praise, and then uh, we'll get right into the word of the Lord. We have a great word for you. Our hearts cry, we magnify in this your holy temple, in this your holy place, and we will rise to Zion's heights to praise and glorify, be unified, and oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. And oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord.
find in this your holy temple in this your holy place and we will rise to Zion's heights to praise and glorify unify and oh how we love you yes oh how we praise you Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. We worship and praise our God. How wonderful it is to be able to worship and praise him. In fact, why don't you just say with me, hallelujah. All right, let's get right into the word of God on today. Uh, We're going to talk about the great God in which we serve. Our God is great. I'm going to go to uh, the great passage of scripture, which is found in Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, Isaiah prophesies about the Lord Jesus Christ some 700 years even before his his birth. Uh, But he gives us a great prophetic understanding of the death of Christ and the significance of his death with respect to our redemption, our healing, our deliverance. Because God is great, he can do great things in your life right now. I think one of the most devastating things is, is um, is to hear that one is sick. I I've received a call from my own cousin, uh, and understand he's having another bout with uh, chemotherapy. And I, and, and I quickly wanted to pray for him and ask God to deliver him and set him free because I know that God is a healer. And no matter what the situation is, uh, it can be a cold, it can be, you know, it can be, it can be cancer, it can be uh, heart disease, uh, high blood pressure, whatever it may be, expect him to heal. Because he's a healer. Well, Bishop Watts, uh, didn't he do that way back then? Does he still do things like that now? Yes, he does. And and that's why we need to go into scripture and remind ourselves of the great God in which we serve. So we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm going to begin reading at uh, verse number one. And and, and I'll read down. I really want to get down to verse Uh, verses 4, 5, and 6, but let me just start with verse 1. Who have believed our report? Isaiah says, and and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he's grown up before us as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He have no form or comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He's despised, he's rejected of men, He's a man of sorrow. He's acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and uh, we esteemed him not. Now, I want you, we've paid attention on those first verses, but let's go right into the cross of what Isaiah wants to say. He starts out in verse 4, Isaiah 53 and 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and he's carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken of God and afflicted. Verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. I want to pause just for a moment and let you know that the death of Jesus Christ was a vicarious death, meaning it was substitutionary. It was not for him. It was for you and I. It was because of our sicknesses and diseases, and especially our sins. And sickness and disease becomes a byproduct of sin. And so sin and all of its byproducts, he became a substitute for all of those. And then verse 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We turn everyone into his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquities of 
us all. Now, this is a very powerful passage of scripture in itself, and we need to understand the fulfillment of it. Uh, it's fulfilled in the New Testament, and how do we know it's fulfilled in the New Testament? Because the Holy Spirit lets us know that it's so. And so, in order to find its fulfillment in Jesus Christ and not some other, we must go to Matthew chapter 8. If you'll turn with me in your Bible, Matthew 8, and we're going to go to verse number uh, 16. Matthew 8, verse 16. And it says, uh, when the even was come, uh, they brought unto him, talking about Jesus. Now, there's no question this is Jesus talking about Jesus here. So when evening was come, they brought unto him to Jesus many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word. And he healed all that were sick. Now let's re revert this back to Isaiah chapter 53, because verse 17 of Matthew 8, Verse 17 says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and he bared our sicknesses. And so <clears throat> when the Bible, excuse me, when the Bible says that by his stripes we are healed, it's talking about physical healing because uh the Holy Spirit lets us know that's so. I know people uh, jump around and say, well, this, that, and the other, but let's let Bible interpret Bible. Matthew 8, verse 16 and 17, let me read it again. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. People are possessed with devils now, whether you know it or not. And he cast out the spirit. How did he do it? With his word. And the Bible says he healed all that were sick. S-I-C-K. A meaning physically sick. Jesus healed them. Verse 17 says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. When did he do that? He take our sicknesses and, and our, our infirmities. Actually, he bore them on the cross. We know that because Isaiah tells us that. Now, it's real important that we, we, we see this because many times when we go to Jesus and we ask for salvation for our sins, uh, that's, what we, that's what we're looking for. But we need to understand that sin carries with it byproducts, sicknesses and diseases. And so the Bible says specifically that he also bore those meaning Jesus took them away from us and he healed these that were sick. Pretty powerful word. I, I want us to think about that just for a moment. The same Lord Jesus that saves me from my sins is the same Lord Jesus that heals me from my sicknesses. Uh, why, why are you going over this with us, Bishop Watts? Because uh, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. Many times we need our faith to be reinforced because the enemy comes in with all of his lies and says, well, you might be saved, but you're sick. You might be saved, but I'll take you out this way. But I think as, as, as people who understand who Jesus is and what he's done for us, we must fight back. In fact, we must fight the good fight of faith and we must stand upon the word of the Lord. Isaiah said by his stripes, the, the fact that he was beaten, he was wounded, we are healed. Some say that's only spiritual healing. I agree that spiritual healing, but not only spiritual healing, also physical healing. I think there are many of us that if we were to testify and raise our hands, if the question was asked, has the Lord ever healed you physically? You would have to say, oh, yes, he has. Um, how did he do it? Does he do it uh, supernaturally, immediately? Sometimes he does. Sometimes it's kind of a gradual healing. Um, Jesus, on one occasion, he told the lepers to go and show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says, as they went, uh, as they went, they were healed. One of them turned around and came back to Jesus and fell at his feet and said, thank you. <laughs> Jesus said, weren't there 10 of you guys? Where's the other nine? Uh, and the one that came back was a Samaritan. He came back to say, thank you. I, I share that with you on today to let you know 
that sometimes healing is not instantaneously uh, 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 in our, our life, but as we go, meaning that I ask the Lord to do what he, uh, to, 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 to heal my body, and then I continue on, and as I continue on in my journey of believing that he has done what he said in his word, he in turn does it. So sometimes it's a gradual healing. Uh, does the Lord heal you through the doctor? Sometimes. I mean, doctors treat symptoms, but it's the Lord who has to heal our bodies. Uh, many times uh, the Lord has healed me simply by showing me uh, do something a little different that you're doing. You're eating the wrong thing. You're around the wrong, wrong, wrong area or breathing the wrong air, what have you. And the Lord speaks to my heart and gives me revelation and a simple change corrects that thing in my life and healing takes place. I can raise my hand with many others and, says, and say the Lord has healed me physically. Now, I'm sharing this with you on today because uh, in a few moments I'm going to pray for you. But there was more to uh, Isaiah's, proph uh, prophecy, uh, Isaiah's prophetic word in, in Isaiah 53. Uh, the sixth verse says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone into his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him, talking about Jesus, the iniquities of us all. And to find that fulfillment, it's fulfilled in the Old, New Testament also. We have to go over to the book of 1 Peter. So we go to the book of 1 Peter, uh, chapter 2, verse 24. I want to read that, and then I'm going to pray for you and pray with you, because I believe God is going to do something very special and significant in your life on today. So... I'm going to go over to the book of First uh, Peter, and uh, I'm going to go to chapter 2 and verse number 24. First um, Peter chapter 2 verse 4, 24 says, uh, Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. Verse 25 says, For we were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. And so we find the second half of Isaiah chapter 53, verses, we read verses 4 through 6, and we see those verses fulfilled in the New Testament. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who says, all of us like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone into our own ways. And that's all of us. Nobody's really good enough to, to receive what the Lord has in store for you. But simply because he's a good God. I, 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 I want to emphasize that to you just for a moment because um, the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ must be the faith that we believe that he is so good until he will do what I asked him to do. I, I often think about Abraham, who's the father of our faith, basically. You know, Father Abraham. And in and, and, and Romans chapter 4, it talks about Abraham and uh, the, great, uh, the, the great promise that God gave to Abraham about having a son. And the reason why he told him he was going to have a son is because Abraham realized something. I am hopelessly lost, and there's nothing I can do about my condition, but I believe that God is so good until he'll find a way to save me. And the way that he found, he said, Abraham, it's going to come through your seed, for out of your seed all of the families of the world will be blessed. And Abraham believed that God was so good that he would make a way, and God was so good that he made a way. And so even though Abraham was now old, about 100 years old, and Sarah was about 90 years old, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. He gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And the Bible says, and the Lord counted it to him for righteousness. Now, when we talk about the healing power of the Lord, Many times we say, I don't know how he's going to do it, and, 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 but, but Lord, here I am. I'm in this condition, just like we're in a condition of sin. Here I am in this condition. 
And I believe you're so good until you will not leave me in this state, but you will find a way to not only save me, but also heal me. God heals not based upon our merit, but he heals because he is good. I want you to focus your mind in that capacity so you can receive what God has for you. He heals because he is good. He will heal you because he is good. Say it with me. God will heal me because he's good. It's not that I merit it. It's not that I've been such a good saint or such a good person and I kind of deserve this because we don't. Except <laughs> we blank, we don't. But he'll do it because he's good. I must believe that he is good. That's where my faith is. So I'm getting ready to pray with you and pray for you. I want you in your state to understand that God will do this for me because simply God is good. Sometimes we say in church, I have people say, repeat after me, God is a good God. And he really is. He's good and he loves you and he'll heal you, not because you merit it, because of his goodness. Let's pray. Father, I do thank you and I praise you for these that are, have heard this word of God on today. We go to the good God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ever ask or think. I don't know what the doctor has said about my friends that I'm praying with. I'm not quite sure where they're at even in their faith, but I've asked them to believe that you're good. And because you're good, you will heal their bodies. Therefore, Lord, stretch out your mighty hand, your hand of deliverance. And Lord, with just one touch, you're able to turn your situation all the way around. Therefore, I'm praying for miracles to be wrought today. The good God who heals our bodies, the same God that Abraham said he, he would stagger not at his promises through unbelief but will be strong in faith and give you glory and praise. Being fully persuaded because you are good, you will do this thing for him and you will do this thing for us. Therefore, Lord, touch and bless the saints of God. I pray that you would turn the situation all the way around for your glory. We call that sickness and disease out. We rebuke the work of the enemy. We speak by the authority of Jesus Christ, and we thank our precious God and Savior. Amen. All right, now, if you've prayed that prayer, uh, that's a very powerful prayer. Uh, now, let's believe God. Uh, do not stagger at the promises of God through unbelief, but be strong in faith, giving glory to God, meaning thank him for the healing virtue, thank him for the healing power. You may feel the symptom. You may even have, still have the symptom, but believe that some way, somehow, because God is good, that he'll heal me instantaneously or as I go praising him. Stay hold of God, and I, and I praise God for this time we've been together. I'll see you next time uh, with a new word from the Lord. Hello, this is Bishop Watts. God bless you, and, and I certainly enjoy ministering to the people of the Lord and we take time to you know study the word of God and and God has given us a message and we're striving now to get this message across the world I'm so glad that we have the opportunity to work with Cross TV uh, which primarily broadcast to the Arab nations as well as across the United States of America we're trying to get into the homes and and getting that word of God out I really believe these are the last days, how about you? But I also know that our God can do anything but fail. I want to encourage you to support this ministry. Support it with your prayers and support it with your finances. If you can give a financial contribution to help us get the word of God out, uh, you can help us by looking at, you can give to Givelify, PayPal, and share. And I believe that as you give, God will give back to you. Uh, you just can't out give. God. And so uh, if you will support us and help us, we'll be able to go even further in carrying uh, the word of the Lord. 
I'm praying now for you. I'm praying that God would touch your family, your families, uh, uh, your children, and uh, your workplace, your finances. And God, in the name of Jesus, grant these things in the life of your people as they support this work and this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, by the way, write me and let me know that you're listening to this uh, program. You're sharing it with others. Uh, you can write me at New Direction Church. 8678 Archibald Avenue, Rancho Cucamonga, California, 91730. I look forward to hearing from you. If you have a prayer request, include that prayer request. We'll take it to the Lord in prayer. I love you. God bless you.